This video is my personal documentation of building Droid Divisions Pit Droid. If you want to build your own Pit Droid, go on Etsy and uh, feel free to purchase the amazing files provided by Droid Division. I will cover the build process from the electronics and the animatronics part as there are already many videos available on how to do a nice sending and painting job on 3D printed droids or any other type of creature. Uh, it's very important for me to state that I am by no means an expert in anything of <laughs> the things I'm doing. It's the very first time that I'm playing with uh, the software. I'm a total newbie to electronics. I have quite some experience in software development, but uh, electronics is probably still at my high school level that I had in physics. So if you find anything that I'm doing totally wrong, I'm always open for constructive feedback. As electronics hardware, I will be using an Arduino Mega 2560 uh, just because I had one still laying around, but you can use more or less any other Arduino board that you can buy or maybe also have laying around. For the servos, I decided to not directly connect them to the Arduino board, but use the Adafruit PCA9685 12-way servo driver gives me a bit more flexibility may might be an overkill for the few and uh, servos that the pit droid needs but i wanted to give it a try the image shows you how to best wire the arduino and the servo driver it also shows you where to connect servos in my case, I will be using the MG996R servos, again, because I just had some laying around from previous projects. It's also very important to note that you do have to feed in additional 5 volt via an external power supply, because the servo's power will not be fed through the Arduino and its power source but uh, through an independent external power supply. As a software for the animatronics, there are various options. As I have no experience with any of those, I just randomly decided to go for Botango, mainly because it looked interesting and powerful and fairly easy to learn, at least for simple animatronic parts. To download Botango, all you need to do is go on their website, scroll down to the download section and download the version of Botango for whatever operating system you need. In my case, it is the Mac version. For an easier showcase, I have placed the downloaded zip file on an empty screen but I'm sure that you know how to handle zip files on your own computer. After you have unzipped the downloaded package, you will find two new folders, a PDF and the Botango application itself. I can only highly recommend you to go through the Botango documentation PDF as it covers many, many aspects of this application. As we are planning to use an Arduino Uno, in my case, the Mega 2560, in addition with the Adafruit PCA 9685 16-way servo driver, we need to prepare the sketch, the Arduino sketch that we need to upload onto the Arduino Uno. To do so, you will have to go into the new folder Botango Arduino driver and for ease of use, double click on the Botango Arduino driver.eno file. This will automatically start your Arduino IDE and bring you to the right source code. 
so that you can do the need to change it. This little video will not go into the details of explaining how to download and install Arduino IDE, as there are many, many videos out there that you can use if you're unfamiliar with this. Once the Arduino IDE has started, please locate the tab called Botengo Arduino Config.h in your IDE and click on it. What we need to do now is tell Arduino IDE which Arduino version or what hardware we're going to build this sketch for. Again, in my case, this would be the Arduino Uno Mega 2560 version. In Botengo Arduino config.h, locate this line defining the use Adafruit PWM library and remove the comment signs, the two slashes that are placed in front of the hashtag define. You can now click on the check mark icon, which is on the top left hand corner for the Arduino IDE to build the new sketch and to verify if you did everything correct. As we have not yet physically connected an Arduino to our computer, we will just go through the build procedure, but not the upload procedure. We will do that right in the next step. Once the compiler is successfully completed, you should see an output message similar to the one that you're seeing on my screen. To perform the next step, you need to physically connect your Arduino with your computer via the USB cable and the USB port of the Arduino. Once you have done the physical connection, you can go back into the Arduino IDE and go to the drop down again to configure or select the Arduino and the port that you have connected the Arduino to. This again depends on if you're running on Windows, Linux or Mac, but I'm sure that you're able and capable to identify the right USB port that you connected the Arduino to. Once you have selected the right Arduino version, you can this time click the upload button. In the output of the Arduino IDE, you should see the build process and the upload process. If everything looks at the end like it does on my screen, congratulations. You've passed your first hardware manipulation step by uploading a new firmware onto your Arduino.